Welcome again, everybody. It's the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast for July 8th. We're right here in the middle of monsoon season. And of course, right at four o'clock while we're recording, that's when all the thunderstorms hit. So hopefully we'll get through the session without any major electrical interruptions. Of course, our uh, podcast and our website are a reflection of our print magazine, the summer issue of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, still out on the streets through the rest of this month and August. Lots of interesting articles in there. And if you want to go and find out where you can find it, we have a map on our website that shows you all the different places you can pick it up. So this is going to be a really interesting uh, podcast. Dennis Courtney is just one of the most interesting, original, groundbreaking practitioners of integrative medicine, uh, dare I say alternative medicine uh, in the area. And he has been podcasting way before it was cool. You can watch his radio show. Yes, you can watch his radio show three times a week on his Google Plus page and his YouTube channel. And uh, he's going to be on with us this hour. I'm really excited to talk to him more in detail about ozone. Ozone therapy is now legal in Pennsylvania for very few people. He is one of them. Uh, and we're going to find out as much as we can. You know, why is it illegal? What's the big controversy? And maybe even try to follow the money trail and see exactly why it is that if it's so popular or if it's so effective, why isn't it more used in traditional medicine? But first, let's get a, a weekly update from our sponsor, Organically Social. Let's hear from Trenton Ozipak. How are you doing today, Trenton? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Obviously, you're, you're in a very professional environment there. It's some sort of a coffee shop um, out being it organic and social. Casual, it's my casual Tuesday. The casual Tuesday. <laughs> so what's the big news this week from Organically Social? So tomorrow we actually start in our office space at the Pittsburgh Public Market. So every Wednesday through Sunday we'll be open. Um, that's hence why my Monday and Tuesday are a little casual now because it's the weekends for me. Um, but the team will start tomorrow at the Pittsburgh Public Market. Um, we'll be having a launch party coming up here soon. Um, we'll be using the space, obviously, just because it's, it's, a, it's great for the foot traffic um, to bring new events in, to bring... Uh, more awareness for the market and all the other merchants that are there. Um, but we are a full-time merchant. We'll be there throughout the entire year. Um, and, you know, we're looking forward to having events, like I said, and seeing what opportunities that we can, again, bring for more awareness. And a lot of people don't realize how many uh, 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 different vendors are in the market there, and that most of them are, are geared towards uh, health and wellness. Many of them have really good food. Absolutely. Really good. Yeah, absolutely, and a lot of the, 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 the businesses that do have, uh, you know, that are more a food merchant or a food vendor do have products that, that are locally, you know, organically sourced, um, and, and, they're, and they're conscious about making sure what we put in our bodies, and, and uh, they're conscious, right? So, but there are other vendors, and what's nice, too, is I, I've seen this trend that um, Eliza's oven from, you know, the bakery will use the milk from across the aisle, and then the, um, the, they'll just kind of team up together, um, so then that way it's kind of like one big, uh, you know, team team pro uh, partnership rather than being like individual and they work off each other. Sure, that's awesome. So you do have uh, cards are on sale now on the website, and you'll have them in your hand uh, very soon, right? Cards are on sale, yeah. So we are doing a thirty percent off for our initial card holders. Um, so instead of twenty four ninety nine for an entire year, your card only costs seventeen forty nine. And again, that deal. gets you access. Yeah, absolutely, and that gives you all the access to the deals and discounts in the network that, uh, again, our businesses do offer. Um, that also gets you discounted access to events that we hold that may have a cost associated with them. Um, so, for example, if we were to have a, a health and wellness event or a fitness class or some, you know, a speaking engagement, if it was ten dollars, you would only you'd get in for five or you'd get in for a discounted rate. We will be having organically social um, activities too that are exclusive to card holders, and those are free. Um, so that's nice to get an invitation to that. And probably the, one of the coolest things is we're doing giveaways. So each month and every quarter, we'll go in and pull out names from our network, um, from the, the card holders, and we'll give you just free prizes away. So whether it's 
a juice cleanse or a free massage or a free week or something, you know, we'll give out giveaways. Um, in our network, those are left up to the terms that the network decides. The businesses that we team up, they decide what they want to give away. That's awesome. So let's talk about some of the deals, uh, what, some of the new businesses and some of the new deals that are available right now on the website. Sure. So right now, I mean, there's everything from... Um, my I lose you? I lose you. Sorry, I thought I lost you. Uh, we're doing everything from 40% off to 60% off. What's nice about Organically Social is we let the business dictate what they want to offer. We don't necessarily ask them to go too steep. Um, so they get to dictate what the, what they want to offer. We have everything from $20 um, Himalayan salt cave sessions to a week free of classes with the purchase of a membership. Um, we have anything from 70% off to 10% off of weekly fitness classes, monthly memberships. Um, we get $2 off organic juice smoothies. Um, and again, we have 32 businesses in the network now that are all offering deals and discounts exclusive to the card orders. Well, that's awesome. So we'll all uh, head on down to the Pittsburgh Public Market this week and meet you and uh, see the space and get some, some healthy lunches. And, of course, you and yeah. I know that there's some real exciting things in the future we'll be talking about on our next uh, future podcast. We do. I'm very excited. So in the calendar this week, uh, a lot of great events, uh, opportunities to get outside and enjoy the summer. Uh, the most important thing, of course, is the World Yoga Fest that's happening on July 26th at Point State Park. And you want to go uh, check out worldmagazine.com slash yoga fest to find out more about that. Uh, again, a great opportunity to connect with the entire yoga community, a really vibrant, thriving community in Pittsburgh. I'm so happy to see that. Coming up on August 6th, Dr. Uma Paragala, uh, one of the authors uh, in this summer issue of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, is going to be speaking at the Psychiatric Grand Rounds uh, at St. Clair out in Export, and that's at 9 a.m. It's a part of their ongoing monthly series of professionals speaking on topics related to mental health. And she's going to be talking about quantum healing. I'm really looking forward to this. And you can find out more at the St. Clair website. And St. Clair is S-E-C-L-A-I-R-E-R.com. So we want to check that out. Also in November, the Pittsburgh School of Massage is going to host a great opportunity for CEs if you're a body worker or professional. Uh, in one weekend, you can get to all of your CEs for your two-year cycle, and it's going to feature um, Traeger principles and resistance release work, and also with Dean Juhan, who, if you are in the bodywork field, you do know who he is, apparently. And finally, uh, one uh, event in the calendar, uh, it's a trip. It's a very important trip. If you're a wellness professional, integrative medicine professional, you really want to pay attention to this. And uh, let's talk right now to the organizer of that trip and see what he has to say about it. So we're talking today with Dr. Dan Wagner, and we're going to talk about a truly extraordinary opportunity for integrative medicine health professionals or just anybody who's interested in uh, herbal medicine and learning from people that are on the ground. Uh, welcome, Dan, and tell us a little bit about uh, your trip that's upcoming in November. Hey, Swen, nice to talk to you again, and you uh, thanks for uh, setting this up. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to this. This is going to be a follow-up on the May trip that we weren't able to complete because we didn't get enough people signed up, but this is going to be a go for sure. We'll be taking a group of 20 to 25 individuals, whether they're in the health profession or not is insignificant. It's just adults, students, if they're interested, who are interested in getting a great holistic experience in the rainforest. And we call this a green pharmacy, right? The right. rainforest of the planet. We're going to go to one of the most biologically diverse places on the planet. This is Ecuador. We'll be flying into Quito on November 9th. And about two hours north of Quito is a relatively new lodge built in the Macuacuchina Biological Reserve. This is a great place. It's about 6,000 hectares, maybe like about 10,000 acres. But just in this one reserve, which also has a cloud forest in it, has something like 4 or 5% of all the bird species on the planet. Just in one small reserve. Wow. Incredible biodiversity. So we're going to stay there for three days. 
Uh, this is just about a two-hour drive from Quito, which is the capital, and it's only about a three-and-a-half-hour flight from Miami, you know, so maybe two hours to Miami. Then we're going to take a bus down to Cuenca, which is sort of the second largest city in Ecuador, maybe the third largest, but it's the, it's the sort of the uh, uh, archaeological, well, what do I want to say, architectural wonder of um, <laughs> of Quito, you know, a lot of the old Spanish style buildings and so forth. So very artistic, I should say. We're going to stay there a night. And then in another couple hours, we'll be driving the bus down to the southern valley of Vilcabamba. Now, Vilcabamba is the valley of longevity. This is where I've taken a number of the student groups before in the past. If you visit uh, www.studentrainforest.org, you can see some of the past trips 17 I've done in the past um, 18 or 19 years. Wow. We're kind of excited because uh, Dr. Chaudhry from Sinclair will be a co-leader with me on this trip. When we get down to the south of Nilkabamba, we're going to spend about five days there. This is a this is a great place of, uh, you know, always temperate climate. So there's it's never too cold, never too hot. Um, we're going to be uh, in the Andes Mountains, about five 6,000 feet in elevation. We'll be climbing into some of the cloud rainforest down there, the cloud forest. It's not a, a bad climb. And we'll be staying in the town of Vilcabamba and visit some of the, some of the um, elders of the community. We'll be having classes with some of the organic farmers in the area. We'll meet some of the shamans and herbalists. And we're going to eat great food while we're down there. But it's going to be a good, good, good experience. And, of course, we'll have lessons from not only myself, Dr. Chaudhry, and some others. So this is really an amazing opportunity. I mean, you're going to be there, Dr. Chaudhry is going to be there, and Ola. So you really have three profoundly experienced uh, medical professionals going to be on this trip. And so learning not through your own eyes, but through the eyes of these three different professionals, this is really a tremendous opportunity for, uh, for healthcare workers. Yeah. I think the price is right. I mean, we're only looking at somewhere around $2,500 for this trip. That's pretty it amazing. It would take some money due to the cost of flights, which we haven't arranged yet. But it's really important at this time to sign up because we need to know how many people are going. We need a deposit. Of course, the deposit is returnable. if Somebody can't make it until we purchase the flights. But at this point, try to get a hold of um, either myself. You can email me at dtwherb at gmail.com. Or call us here at Nutra Pharmacy at 412-486-4588. I know some of the fine people at Seclair are putting together a marketing brochure for this trip. So we're really committed to make this work November 9th through 19th this year. And that's only uh, just a few months away. Ecuador. Yeah, that's only just a few months away. So really, even though we're thinking about summer vacations right now, uh, we really well, the itinerary is set, and if anybody emails me, I'll send them the proposed itinerary at this point. I think Great. we just have to nail down exact cost and how many people are going. But you know, even if we end up with nine, ten people, we're going to go. We've got to set Great. a precedent, and I think that's important. So Dan's trip itinerary and all of the events we talk about are all up on the calendar page on the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine website. That's journaloflifestylemedicine.com. So let's get right to it now. I've been looking forward to interviewing this guy for a long time. Uh, Dr. Dennis Courtney is an MD with an attitude. He is, uh, and that attitude is find out what works best and don't waste time with what doesn't. Uh, he's been offering leading edge uh, alternative medical procedures, therapies, practices for years in his McMurray office and a, a very specific cardiac procedure in a, in a Monroeville office. Uh, always on the go, always interesting to talk to, always look forward to saying hello to Dr. Dennis Courtney. How are you doing today, Dr. Courtney? I'm doing well, Sven. Thanks for inviting me aboard today. I'm anxious to see what we uncover, what we're going to be doing here in the next few minutes. But uh, <laughs> you, you captured me. I am not going anywhere, as you well know. And you, you're and tough so, to capture, uh, yeah. 
I am tough to capture. Yep. But I'm all yours, Finn. Go right ahead. That's great. I, you know what? I, uh, I was so happy to have your article in uh, this issue of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, it's you can now take a walk on the cloud. So this is going to be the topic we want to talk about. Although I need to say right up front that when people come to your office, you've got what a dozen different kinds of really leading edge alternative practices that you you do at your office, right? Uh, we yeah, we've been spearheading a number of neat modalities for a long time. The one that we're probably going to refer to is the newest kid on the yeah. block getting a lot of attention this new child yeah yeah um, because really it deserves the attention that it's receiving and uh, it's just helping so many people where other other therapies have even shown that they've had limitations as it stands right now the new child has no limitations as of yet i don't want to get into this but i need to I, i'm going to start with the 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 dumb questions here now uh, you know in some ways i'm just a yinzer from mount washington and so when people hear ozone therapy, I think one question that comes to mind, certainly for a lot of people, is has come, the weatherman says it's an ozone action alert day, that's a bad thing, but you're going to take ozone and put it in my body, that's a good thing. Can you, can you explain a little bit what the, how that works? Yeah, I sure can. In <laughs> fact, um, you know, there, there is, a, ozone is our atmosphere. If, if we didn't have it, we would be so shriveled up from the um, ultraviolet rays that we're protected from, from ozone. So it's like a cheap joke to think that ozone, right off the bat, could ever be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So just keep that one in mind. Okay. If there's no ozone layer, we don't have human beings living on the planet. You I remember, yeah, ozone. back in the 90s, the big fear was a hole in the ozone layer. They discovered a hole in the ozone That's layer, right. and uh, we were all going to be fried to bacon within 10 years. So uh, the, the problem has become, however, because ozone really purifies everything it comes into contact with. The pollutants that we put out into the atmosphere get captured by the ozone in a, in a cleansing way. And the fact that ozone is easy to, to measure made the connection all too unresistable by governmental agencies. So rather than talking about the pollution alert, which they can't measure, they talk about the ozone alert, oh. which they can, and they've equated the two as synonymous, which is an absurdity beyond incredulity, if you allow me to use the English language in that way. <laughs> so that really is, you know, I was kind of making a joke about that, but that really is a big problem that people hear the word ozone and they think bad. And you're saying that that sort of prejudice, that, that knee-jerk reaction to the word, extends well into the scientific community? Uh, because it's easily measured. They can, they can uh, with little, little monies involved, check ozone levels in all areas of the atmosphere and do it easily. They can't do the same with pollution. Hmm. And consequently, they give you the ozone report when, in fact, they're giving you the dirt report, and it's the ozone trying to clear it out. So ozone, ozone is our friend. For. Yeah, yeah, ozone's your friend. Okay. So uh, I know I have to contend with this question as a starter question with just about everybody that I bring the concept of ozone to, but it really is a moot point. It is not okay. Uh, the the dirty substance that has been led and believed to be it's the purification substance that we must have in order to keep our atmosphere clean. Sure, because ozone is also that fresh, clean, sharp smell after a thunderstorm, right? Exactly right, okay. because of the electrical discharge during a thunderstorm, we're able to step up regular oxygen, which is O2, and take it to a third, connected to a third oxygen called O3, and that has a very distinct aroma and when you walk outside after a thunderstorm, everyone knows the, the, the essence of what they smell all around them, and that, that's ozone. I smell that every single day because I don't have a thunderstorm going on in here, but I got something akin to it. It's called an <laughs> ozone generator, and in a controlled fashion, I cause a lightning storm in a box and that's ozonate an oxygen source to produce the ozone that I'm going to end up injecting. 
Okay, so let's talk about the science then of what happens in the body. You basically, you're injecting O3 into the body, or, or tell, me, tell me the process. How is a session done? Yeah, um, okay, like? so uh, there are a couple of ways that ozone can be administered. Uh, one of the most common ways is uh, been described by, uh, I'll keep referring to the guy by the name of Frank Schallenberger. I right. can't talk about ozone without mentioning Dr. Schallenberger. He's really the godfather of ozone therapy here in the United States. And he's been the guy who's who I mentioned in the article, and I mention every time I step in front of a, uh, on a microphone, that thanks to him, we have ozone as a therapy today. 30 years ago when he introduced it, um, nobody was listening. Now a lot of people are listening. Yeah. And so Frank uh, named the first treatment MAH, which stands for Major auto chemotherapy. And so the setup for that form of administration goes something like this. We get IV access, uh, usually to a large vein. The elbow works just fine. Um, we hook that IV up to a bag of saline, which is salt water, the, the same 0.9% that our body fluids contain. And then we take 60 cc's of blood that we draw out of that IV and we inject it into the bag and mix it with the saline. So far, are we so good? All right? I'm with you so far. Okay. Once that's in the bag, then I step to the ozone generator and make up a 60 cc syringe of a gas. Ozone is a gas. And it fills up my syringe full of this concentrated ozone, which then is also injected into the bag where the blood and the saline have already been mixed together. How are we doing up to this point? Okay. I'm still with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The moment we inject this volume of gas into the bag, something miraculous happens. And what happens is before that gas reaches the top of the blood slash saline solution, there is no more ozone. Hmm. It's all gone. The reason that it's gone is that third oxygen molecule is highly reactive. It is uh, that reaction that occurs between that third oxygen molecule and the double bonds of the fats contained in your blood. And so in a nanosecond, the ozone is gone, but what gets formed is this miraculous substance that we're then going to put back into the patient called an ozonide. And it's the ozonide that does all the beautiful work, not ozone. Ozone never is really going into the body. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So this, now the important thing about that extra O3, uh, that extra uh, oxygen molecule is, uh, now again, uh, you're, you're working with my rudimentary understanding of the human body is, we have iron in our blood. And that iron, basically, when it's exposed to too much oxygen, rusts. And we get uh, uh, rust basically in our in our bloodstream. We call that inflammation. Uh, is that about right? And then this o this extra oxygen molecule is what a molecule is what can come in and clean that stuff out. The the the, the key well, problem is the I, inflammation. I, that was that that was a giant leap there, Spen, if I ever heard one. I'm going to bring you back. Okay? <laughs> bring me, reel me in. Reel me I in, Dr. To, Courtney. You, you, you talk about incredulous statements. Uh, <laughs> I just put that one up there with the top ten. Uh, no, the um, <laughs> whenever you've mixed up your batch of O3, because you've taken regular oxygen from an oxygen tank, and that little electrical device that I have in my office is akin to the thunderstorm that you told me you were familiar with right. that generates this ozone. Right. Well, that's what happens in, in the ozone generator. But this O3 is not going to hold. It doesn't last. It doesn't yeah. stay together as O3. So as we inject it in the bag, that one oxygen molecule, just the one, is going to react not with iron or not with any other thing. It reacts favorably to... The fats, the double bonds found in the fats, in the fats that are contained within your blood. Okay. And it's that reaction that leads to the formation of an ozonide. The ozonide. It has nothing to do with iron. Okay. It has nothing to do with um, what I think you're referring to by rust is oxidation. Oxidation, right. 
Yeah, and so um, that is what I mean. happens when oxygen, you know, reacts on a substance for quite a while. But this reacts with double bonds and forms the ozonide, and that the ozonide will be given back in the blood when we when we return to the patient is probably where our conversation needs to go next. Right. Well, what I was what I was referring to, I think, is that when we're out in the world and we're eating bad things and that we get this inflammation, we get this oxidation in our bloodstream and this ozonide, what you're going to, we're putting, we're going to get to the process now of what happens when that goes into the body. That is what it's addressing. Well, it's going after those inflammation It's going after the bad stuff. Well, you're, in our system. you're right. Uh, you're right about um, oxidation occurring at the cell membrane level. Okay. Um, it's, it's a constant battle. It's the, uh, it, by the way, is a natural process. Right. So not not to take the position that oxidation is bad probably is the is the more correct. Oxidation is good. Okay. Uh, it needs a body process. It has to go on, but how it gets dealt with is the important thing. And if you cannot deal with the byproducts of that oxidation, then you will suffer from the consequences of the oxidation process. And if you can contend with them, and by the way, ozone treatments are one of the ways you can do that, then you will benefit from oxidation. It's a good thing, okay. not a bad thing to do. All right. Well, this is, again, why you're the doctor and I'm the journalist here. Um, ah. So uh, tell us what, uh, you know, you've had this thing for a couple of months now. So rather than just the theory of what it's supposed to treat, why don't you tell us what you have seen with your own eyes, what it has treated, uh, how it's working, how your patient's responding to it? Yeah, uh, I would say the two basic categories of individuals that come to me. One are those afflicted with very serious systemic diseases, um, and they are just a life of misery and agony. They got, they got a description of symptoms and a symptom complex that just, doesn't have an end. I, I would think the categories that the listener would probably be able to identify with would be, how about these? How about fibromyalgia? Right. How about um, Lyme's disease? How about Epstein-Barr mononucleosis? Um, how about multiple sclerosis? How about these serious disorders that I think we can say in every single case there is no conventional treatment I'm aware of, and I'm a medical doctor, meant to eradicate any one of the four or five things I've just ticked off for you. Do right. you know of one? Because I don't. Uh, no, and I was going to say that the, none of those have cures per se. The best we can do right now is just kind of treat the symptoms, right? Well, and that's what I've become accustomed, even though I've done it in an alternative way. Mm -hmm. I've attempted to not use toxic drugs to deal with those four or five well, as well as the other 45 or 4,500 things that one can present to my office. So my pledge has been for the longest time, I don't use drugs. There's a better way to handle it. But even at that, I couldn't eradicate these diseases. Uh, I could get improvements, but I couldn't correct them. Yeah. Well, guess what? Ozone has allowed me to make crazy statements like, Every one of those things is fixable. Now, that has been interesting. And as you say, yeah. this has only been going on a couple of months. So I'm giddy every day that I walk into my office. I don't walk in. I skip in, <laughs> which is a pretty good task. Pretty good task for a 67-year-old male. I was going to say, how often do you get in that tank there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's right. I may be sniffing a little too much of that stuff myself. But no, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be able to, to work with afflicted in such yeah. a way to make their, their, their back to normal again, to make them whole again. And that's what we're finding out. So one of the common ways of administering is through major autohemotherapy, which is the way that we handle systemic disease. The other big category of patients, and I have a bunch of these, are people that have localized pain problems hmm. for whatever reason, and, and, and the list goes on and on. How about things like osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, um, musculoskeletal problems, myofascial problems, you name it, where there's pain and discomfort localized to a spot, like a knee or two knees or, 
a wrist or a shoulder. And in my career as an anesthesiologist, I felt that I had a good command of how to manage these problems. But unfortunately, the wrong word that I used then was the word manage. I'm now not managing these problems. I'm fixing them. And to me, as a pain doctor who's been spending his whole career working with chronic pain and never getting to the point where it was fixed, to see that it's fixable is, well, it's one of the reasons I skipped the work. That's got to be really fulfilling, really heartwarming. Just, uh, I mean, your soul must sing every day when people can get that kind of healing if they're, if they're really uh, yeah, coming out. And, uh, and, and sure, uh, to see that you're, uh, to see the smile on their faces. Um, and intuitively, you know, as we prepared to launch this program here, um, a lot of people, you, you know, I do a radio show and, yeah. um, I was fortunate enough to bring the great Frank Schallenberger yeah, to my yeah. radio show, uh, on three separate occasions between, um, January of 2014 and, um, in April, and the listeners responded when they heard Frank talk about what could be possible with respect to their own medical problems. My phone rang off the hook. Yeah. My door gets knocked over in the morning. <laughs> it just doesn't, you know, creak open. The the public is so ready for this, and of course, as you can tell from my article, they've been kept from it. For years, and let's talk an about that. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. the legal issues. Why? Why is it not been allowed? Basically, what's your understanding of why it's been? I mean, besides the fact that it's the state of Pennsylvania that said no, yeah. why does the state of Pennsylvania say no? Well, I, I am d uh, dumbfounded to explain the reasoning why. I just somebody, some sometime in the past, who is in a position of power. And in the case of a medical doctor, that power rests what's called the state medical board. Mm -hmm. And these are very powerful people. They get to determine the therapies that are allowed to be administered in the state. And so, although I can't cite a document, I can cite a, um, a postulation, a, a, a pretty much unwritten, nonverbal description of where their position was, which was in the state of Pennsylvania, no doctors are going to be allowed to administer ozone therapy. I can't answer why. I just know what was. And it was well known to all of us doctors who thought that we were open-minded enough and practice alternative medicine. We knew that ozone was a place not to travel because you were committing professional suicide if you mm. attempted it. You were raided, and I mean with guns drawn by state agents. Um, you had your equipment confiscated. You probably had your license lifted. And so to, to think that you were going to do ozone in this state was an absurdity. No one went there, and that all changed this year, didn't it, Spence? Yeah, I was going to say, now let's get to the exciting part, because, uh, and I call this a peek behind the irony curtain here, because your favorite government agency is now your best friend. Uh, my favorite was, that was a Yeah, isn't that, isn't that funny how fate steps in? <laughs> of course, um, there are, um, uh, in terms of governmental agencies, there's their own hierarchy, and everybody knows who's the big kid on the block. And the big kid on the block, when it comes to medical issues, is called the FDA. And um, everybody knows about the FDA. All the listeners know about it. And they wear the biggest pants of everybody in the schoolyard. And oddly enough, as I say, you say, how ironic. Yeah. Uh, an agency that I really have questions. I'm, I'm going to keep it clean today. Yeah. <laughs> I have serious questions about how the FDA operates and does the many things that it does. And we'll just let it go at that. But to think that I get a letter saying, well, this Dr. Courtney, by the way, he's now legally permitted to use ozone in his practice, and nobody is allowed to prevent him from doing it, including the state, uh, is made me dumbfounded and equally giddy since I since that letter arrived. So the FDA, in in a, in a non-joking sense, really wants to know 
about ozone. They must have come to Frank Schallenberg and said, look, Frank, we get a lot of questions about ozone. We don't know how to answer the questions. Could we come up with a set of rules that we could live by so that we could give you an IRB? Remember those three letters, Mm -hmm. IRB. That stands for an Institutional Review Board, and it's a research wing of the FDA. So what has happened because of Frank Schallenberger is they came up with the rules that 160 of us throughout the country have to follow. Mm -hmm. And as long as we follow the rules, we are allowed to use ozone in our practice. And nobody, and I mean nobody, can say anything to the contrary because they are the FDA and they wear the big pants. And uh, as I practice my medicine each day, they're involved Mm -hmm. because every case that I will work ultimately is going to get submitted to the FDA. They're doing this for investigational reasons, and we will be adjudicated someday in the future to find out, does ozone really meet what it says it can do? Does it do so safely? And does it do so cost-effectively? And if it can meet all those criteria, and I certainly believe it can, it will be able to be covered by insurances, which now it is not. It's okay. considered experimental. That was a question ahead of coming. So, the, so, so uh, the, the FDA has trumped the state and said, you're allowed to practice this, and this is in place for a while. So all of your patients now, uh, with their name or without their name, they're, they're re- the results of their processes get submitted to the FDA. Yeah, without their name. Without their their, their name. initials okay. are used. Their initials are used. Their birthdays are used. And their sex, but and so except you, for those three parameters, no other thing is mentioned about them. So, okay, the, the degree of concept, confidentiality is maintained, uh, but the the resolution of the problems that the FDA is going to see. I mean, where you know what I what I tell you before? I said yeah, Lyme's yeah. disease. I said fibromyalgia. Right. I said, These are big money users out of uh, the insurance dollar, and they're not providing people with the relief to justify the monies that they're being expended right. on their behalf to think that ozone may be able to solve this and allow people to actually have the C word. How about that C word that very difficult for me to use even on the radio, but things are being cured around here yeah. and I'm amazed. Yeah. And, and that's where I want to get to a little bit here is what, um, you you know where with my my crude jokes about rusting in the blood and all that sort of thing aside, um, from what I understand, the core problem of all degenerative diseases, localized or the systemic, uh, is inflammation. And so what what I think I've heard you say is that the ozone therapy helps reduce inflammation no matter where it occurs in the body. Is that do I have that right? Well, you started out great. I started I said, out oh, my good. Goodness, like, Sven, swerved into Sven left field again. Gonna, Sven Darn. really mu- – and then Sven, then you blew it. So I, let's, uh, let's let you recover. Right. Let's try – well, let, okay, let's take so, it one step at a time. Uh, inflammation is the core of a lot of problems in the body. Uh, but inflammation is a result of something. So yeah. actually, there is a basic uh, – how do I say this? There is the common link – to all diseases that ozone goes directly to the heart of. That's what I'm looking for. A common for. link. Yeah. And that is not inflammation. It's not. Inflammation is due as a result to this common link. Okay. So once you know the common link, somewhere after that, inflammation comes, and that becomes a visible problem where, you know, a lot of damage occurs. But what leads you to the inflammation, I think is the fascinating part about ozone, and so let's get to that common link. Okay, Here it is. That? that no matter what the disease you can name, the common link to it with all other diseases is that of each and every cell in the body, of which there are trillions, and each cell has a nucleus, so that's equal number of those, but inside that nucleus are thousands per cell of little organelles called mitochondria. You may have heard the term before mitochondria right right. but it's the mitochondria of each and every cell that takes and through a process called the Krebs cycle uh, or 
um, oxidative phosphorylation, big fancy words, Easy but it's able to take yeah. foods and oxygen and burn them. Now here comes the drum roll to make the substance that is vital to all life, and that's called energy in the form of ATP. ATP, right. ATP is the link. If you have a group of cells, no matter where they are, and their mitochondria can't muster enough ATP to make those cells function optimally, then they won't. And whatever cells they happen to be controlling, you're going to get symptoms from that particular zip code, wherever that may be. So mm -hmm. if that's your mm -hmm. kidneys, the kidneys aren't going to filter the blood as the way they should because they can't. They don't have the energy to do it. And you're going to develop the renal symptoms. If your heart is afflicted with the ability to maximize energy production, you're going to suffer from, uh, well, congestive heart failure for sure. But all the diseases that all the t that the inflammation will begin there and everything else because those cells aren't able to work optimally. Yeah. So just change and move around the, the areas of the body. The link that's the same for every area that might not be working right is its mitochondria can't function optimally, and ozone fixes that problem. That that is fascinating. Okay, I think I followed you on that one this time. And We'll see if I can get it right the next okay. time we talk about it. Uh, yeah, it's the common link. By the way, yeah. uh, six months ago, I would have said that the common link to all disease was inflammation. Well, so I heard been, it from Andrew Weil, so I thought it was a pretty good company. And so, I mean, yeah. hey, you were right there. Yeah. there. There I was six months ago. Okay. But that's a process further on down the road. The beginning process is mitochondria that can't work, and when you give ozone, it's able to restore and replenish the mitochondria's ability to make energy. Supposedly, one okay. one molecule of a, one mole of of a fat is supposed to be able to produce thirty six moles of ATP. Hmm. Thirty six. So, how many are you making? Are you making? If you're making thirty six, then you're as close to an Olympic athlete as you can ever get. <laughs> But if you are uh, in the, an injured and afflicted individual, your mitochondria per mole of a fat may only be making five moles. Mm. Well, heck, your cells, they can't work. Their cells can't, can't develop the energy to do what they need to do. That, that system fails. The symptoms that spill from its failure become obvious. Doctors are trained in recognizing the symptoms, but they're not trained in zeroing in on the ultimate cause. That's why this is so fascinating. Yeah, we now yeah. have the ability to come right down to the lesion that afflicts us all. You're really getting wow. to the root of everything. I mean, you really are getting to the root of all, every kind of affliction, basically. Absolutely. That, and that's, that's, what's, that's why I skip into work every morning, my friend. Well, now let's, let's tie the loose ends together here. Let's take a look at if if everything you've said is true, and I have no reason to doubt it, um, and all of these results are going to be overwhelmingly positive, we're going to see uh, spectacular uh, final results from this IRB at the FDA. Uh, let's envision that this is all approved. Or, or before we go there, who we got to follow the money here? I think is the, is the problem. Who is put out of business? Or who's going to be affected negatively if everything, all of that you said about the ozone therapy is true, and this turns out to be a panacea of um, immense proportions? How does this shift wanted, yeah. medicine? Uh, who, who benefits? Who loses? Well, I think actually the way medicine is going, this more than likely is going to actually be embraced. And here's why the medical professionals are. Oversatcher, they cannot contend with the sick people that they're now seeing. Yeah. Okay, they can't do it. Can't keep up. The whole with system it. is stressed. Yeah, yeah, stressed. So they have five minutes to devote to somebody who is very ill, and all they're able to do is write the prescriptions so they can see them in next month. What a terrible, what a terrible form of medicine. If that's all you're doing is, you know, 
keeping the symptoms sort of under control, but you're never fixing anything. Mm -hmm. So I actually think that there's a waiting um, medical uh, uh, body that's ready for this because if they people get better, they do have the time for wellness visits. There's plenty yeah. of doctors that go around. Yeah, They don't have the time for sick people visits. So the people that probably are going to lose on this one will be hospitals. Mm -hmm. Okay? They'll be losing. Because you're not going to, boy, you don't go into a hospital unless you've got some real serious things going on. Mm -hmm. Stay out of those hospitals. They are not good places. Not that they don't want to be. But you don't come out of there vertical. You go in vertical and eventually, right? You sometimes come out horizontal, horizontal yeah. and um, so hospitals will lose, and that's okay. It's okay because the yeah. medical uh, professionals actually should enjoy this, uh, actually being able to fix something. I think all doctors will become giddy themselves if they can actually fix something. How frustrating is yeah. it to have to see a bunch of people and never fix anything ever? Got to be terrible. It's got to be. It's got to be heart wrenching. Very, really. Yeah, uh, it is. It's got to be. Yeah. So I don't think my medical colleagues. Now, they, they probably won't get over the fact that something like ozone would be the thing that turns the corner, and we're, believe you me, many decades away from that revelation. Okay. But you and I are here now. Yeah. Well, and people can we come see you now. As we develop our afflictions, yeah, we need to be treated in the now, not in the future. And it's here, Sven. Yeah. It can be dealt with now very well, and it's so nice to be able to be a part of it. And so people can call your office, and your phone number is? Yeah, I would uh, I would uh, say to them, um, if you want to come in so we can talk about your particular set of issues, am I allowed to give my phone number Yeah, here? absolutely. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, call my office. is easy. 724-942-3002. Okay. Come on and schedule that first appointment so that we can find out how it is that we can help you. Now, there are still many of the therapies we use in conjunction with, maybe even sometimes separate from. So I'm not saying everybody that comes here actually should and could and would be scheduled to do ozone therapy, but it's certainly at the top of my list to consider first. I would think uh, that you come out of a treatment just feeling uh, giddy and energetic and like you've just had a yoga session or something. Has, have you? Have well, you I actually, <laughs> I actually, and we looked at each other and just shook our head and said, we, we can't. I have had people jump out of the chair <laughs> and, and start to, well, these are people that had pain problems. And here they were, they limped on the way in. I watch them come in. I, I'd known them for many, many months to years. They were waiting for the day that ozone could be used on their behalf. And I'll be doggone if on the first day with the first treatment, I see this man who is a nice man. I, I believe him. He's not, he's not someone that would uh, do anything and be completely accurate and honest. And he steps up and starts to show my office manager, hey, Kim, look at this. Look at them. Look how I can do that. Look how I can turn this. Look, I couldn't. And we're looking at one another saying, come on now. What's going on here? And he meant it. He was honest. We're the ones. We're the ones that have to change. I am not used to seeing this, okay? Wow. This isn't how it has worked in my office. I've become accustomed to, as I'm finishing a treatment, I expect when they get out of the chair, there should be a major change that occurred. Now I'm ready for it. In the early that's days, right. a couple months ago, I wasn't. Well, coming from, from your lips, that's quite a statement because you've really been on the cutting edge and the leading edge, sometimes the bleeding edge of uh, alternative treatments here in Western Pennsylvania for a couple of decades now. And I want to honor you for that. And I thank you for, for being with us today and talking about this really exciting uh, treatment that you're doing. Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be invited onto your podcast. No, we had a little difficulty in getting me here. I thank no, you and your, you know, your that, technical that, staff. That we fix for it in arranging post. It. Yeah, we fix it in post. That's what we call it. We fix it afterwards. So it's all good. All right. we, we got you on there, and uh, it's been a fascinating conversation. I uh, can't wait to see what you come up with next. Uh, probably more ozone, but that's okay. We, we like that too. Uh, look forward to having you on again sometime in the future, Dr. Dennis Courtney. Look forward to it. Thank you very Goodbye, much. Goodbye, my friend. Thank you very much. Take care now.
Bye bye. Bye now. Always, always fascinating. Uh, I just, you know, the people in Western Pennsylvania, the doctors and the professionals that I get to work with and interview, it's just, uh, that's what makes me sing. That's what makes me skip into work every day is I get to interview and interact and, and deal with people like that. Uh, Dr. Courtney is just an amazing character. And uh, that's just uh, what you'll see here every week, every week at four o'clock on Tuesday, if you want to watch it live. And then we post it on Wednesday as the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast, where we talk to national figures, local figures, uh, anybody we can dig up that will be teaching us uh, the very latest things about what's going on in integrated medicine and lifestyle changes. So that'll do it for this week. And uh, I want to invite you to like us on Facebook and uh, love us on uh, whatever other platforms we're on and insert whatever other emotions you'd like to do on Spreaker and Stitcher and join us every week. And uh, also, if you're an integrative medicine professional, please join our meetup group, uh, meetup.com slash integrative medicine professionals. That'll do it for this week. Yins, be careful out there.